Hi Floss Tube, it's Kat from Cat Stitch. Today is Sunday the 12th of June. Uh, it is now around about lunchtime here in New Zealand. The weather is miserable and um, so I'm having to use the ring lights. I'm, I'm going to try and not have it reflect in my glasses if I can. It's just otherwise the room is really, really dark. Um, to Let's see, floss tube number 11. Uh, for those that have just stopped by for the first time, hi and welcome. Um, it is pretty much mainly about cross stitch, although occasionally I do go off on a tangent. Um, so thank you very much for stopping by and giving it a go. I know that a lot of our regular floss tubers out there are all on summer break retreats and all that sort of stuff. So there's not quite so many updates from everybody. So if I'm a if I'm a gap filler, brilliant. Uh, for those that have come back uh, after the train wreck that was last week, thank you so much for giving me another chance. Um, all good this week, and I would like to say very much thank you um, for the messages of support and the reaching out. Uh, it was very, very much appreciated. Um, now I'm trying to remind myself where I've got to look. Look, look there. The reason I've, you see that I've, I've moved around things a bit, as I said, and I've got to remember if I can look at Witchy, at, at Beulah, <laughs> I'm hopefully going to be looking in the right direction <laughs> and, and stop looking over to the side. Um, okay, so what have we got on today? Today I have got some whip starts, uh, loose plans of what I want to start for the rest of the month and also something that may be happening next weekend, which will be exciting. Um, well, actually, two things happening next weekend, so even more exciting. Um, is it next weekend? Yeah, next weekend. I'm trying to remember the dates. Okay, um, and some finishes, but no fully finished this week. Uh, and yeah, did I say a little bit of haul? It's just some threads, but I'm very excited. See, this is like my fourth attempt at doing this. So I'm trying to remember what I've already said and what haven't I said. Did I say that in the previous one? And, you know, bugger. Okay. So, uh, let's see. Life update. Well, my car battery died. And so I pretty much had a valid reason not to go anywhere because um, I attempted to get on some public transport and had pretty much a meltdown. So... That was out. So I got to stay and work from home last week. So I was quite happy about that. But tomorrow back at work, uh, my car battery is replaced. Damn it. Um, but hopefully I'll hear from the, about the Flexi work soon. Uh, otherwise, you know, everything's pretty much, you know, same old, same old. Um, I've just been... Not completely focused on stitching. I have sort of learnt that when my eyes start clicking, I need to stop stitching. So I find other things to do, which is um, why I've, I've got you know everything moved around, <laughs> moved around again. Um, and it's also given me a chance to sort out what I want to do for the rest of the month. At the start of the year, I don't know if you saw one of my earlier videos. Um, I said I wanted to try and do fifty completes this year not fully finished but completely stitched um because i turned 50 in april so i just wanted to commemorate it um i was actually doing a count of you know of the ones that have finished so far this year i thought it was only around about 40 only um but i mean there are some very small ones in there um but i'm actually about i think i'm i'm working on number 48 uh, which I'm hoping to finish today. So, uh, yeah, I think I think I'm gonna gonna hit the 50 target. So it made me sort of think, okay, so what do I want to do for the rest of the year? Because that was my focus is to get 50 things completed. So I might have been slightly enabled to um, bring in some new sort of things. Although my goal for the rest of the year anyway was to um, only try and do ones from designers I've never stitched before. Um, and yes, included in that is a bloody sampler. 
I still haven't decided if I'm going to keep the alphabet yet or not. There's a part of me that says I have to because that is part of the design and, and the aesthetic of it. But then there's this other part of me that says really another alphabet. You know, I mean, you saw one of my, one of my old ones and I'm sort of thinking I've, I've stitched an alphabet. I don't need to stitch another one. And besides, if I do a quote, um, as I was uh, very nicely advised, thanks Jodie, um, you know, words have alphabets and I can do a quote. It's the same sort of thing. It's got letters. Um, so I'll, but I'll get, I'll get on to some of my plans and some of my ideas for the rest of this year. Seeing I'm so close to my actual goal for the year. Um, but meanwhile, what have I been working on? Well, hang on, no, I haven't. I'm getting ahead of myself. What have I been watching? In all honesty, I've spent a lot of week. Of, of the week watching Buffy. Yes, retro, I know, but it's a, the 25th anniversary, is it this year or last year? Um, and can't believe it's 25 years, oh my god. Um, I saw one of the little reunion things on YouTube. Can I just say, they all still look pretty damn good, you know? Consider it's 25 years later, it's like, I oh know I don't look the same as I did 25 years ago. Um, maybe 15 years ago, maybe I don't know. I'll have to have, I'll have to try and find a photo. I know what. I've got a photo from 2004 when I was in London. Um, so I'll put that here. And yes, that is with hair and makeup. And all that sort of other shit that I don't like. Um, but a friend had very nicely um, organised a photo shoot for me. Uh, and I hate having my photo taken. But this was me in 2004 if I can get it to work if there's nothing there then you know I couldn't find the photo um okay so yeah so the majority of my week was taken up watching Buffy uh, which I loved but uh Nara one of my lovely flossy uh you know viewers uh recommended me a couple of programs a couple of channels because you know like I mean I like finding new channels to watch and things like that um, a couple of them, you know, most of them I already had. I'd already, you know, they're already on my subscribe list and and I love watching them and stuff like that. But she did introduce me to Maximum Cross Stitch Power Hour Ellen Rice. Price. Reed. Oh my God, I can't read my writing. Ellen Reed. I should have known that, duh. Uh, if you haven't seen her, go and watch. She's really lovely. It's It's interesting. When you see or when you find a flossy that's been going for, a, you know, a couple of years or a year and a half, over a year, and you watch their first one and then you watch their last one or even halfway through, it's interesting how a lot of them, in all honesty, tend to go a very similar direction. They start off with just Ada and, and doing all these different, you know, bits and pieces of things and stuff, and then... A year in, suddenly they're on linen, uh, whereas when they started on Ada, they couldn't understand how you could sit. And obviously, they got educated <laughs> um, and things like that. So now the main thing they stitch on is linen or even weave or, you know, 40, there's all these high counts. And just so you know, that's never going to happen with me. If anything, my counts are going to be getting lower, um, not higher. Uh, but it's, it's just interesting watching the progression you know every single floss tuber that i've watched um that's been going for a while and most people probably already know them and things like that their first you know four or five video uh, videos which is what i watch i watch the first four or five to see you know if if they're going to have content that i will want to keep watching basically um especially if i'm going to be binging and stuff like that and if they do, then I carry on watching and then I enjoy the journey even more because I'm enjoying the fact that they're progressing and they're changing and they're developing and, and things like that. But it's just interesting, um, whether it's because in Floss Tube World community, whatever, um, there is a certain genre in cross stitch that does tend to be the feature, which is samplers or primitive or you know the traditional styles 
Um, and when you do things like what I do, uh, you don't really see so many flossies out there that have been around for a long time that still do this sort of work. They start with this and then they change. Having said that, yes, I know I'm going to be starting the sampler, but it's a one-off and it's just so that I can tick it in my box of things I've done. I still love doing this sort of stuff here, although I am curious about the more primitive style of it. But I have my favourites and I'm not going to change that. You know, that's, I, I, I get happy. I am happy uh, when I'm stitching these quirky little things and stuff like that. Doing whopping great big ones is just wonderful, but if I did stuff like that, one, I wouldn't, I, I, you know, I would hardly finish any of them and I'd have nowhere to put them anyway and they'd end up in a drawer. I've already got a lot of larger pieces that I've done that are just fold up or rolled up in a bag and they've been that way for years and it saddens me because I know how much time and you know how many, how many hours I put into those things so I, I don't want to work on these whopping great big projects to go up on you know to go up on walls that don't exist you know I would rather work on something that there is the potential that I can do something with rather than put it into a drawer um, but it's just really it's just really interesting anyway um, see told you ramble tangent uh, so go and check out Ellen if you don't already you know know who she is go and check her out check out the first few videos and then have a look at one you know some of her more newer ones I haven't caught up completely yet I think I'm at the start of the year um, and 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 that sort of thing where she was you know talking about going to retreats and stuff and um, meeting other lovely floss tubers and, and that sort of thing and you know I would love to go especially to um, the north one in Canada that, that would be the one that I want to go to. Uh, I know that sounds weird. Other people are talking about StitchCon and, and all these other ones, but my roots are in Canada. Um, and so that's where I, if, if I was ever going to go over something like that, it would be to the Canadian one. So there you go. Just need to win lotto. Mind you, I need to get a lotto ticket. Uh, other than that, I did catch up with uh, Stitchman Darcy. Because I realized, I forgot that I, I hadn't gone back and watched the last few videos. So I got to watch him from the start of the year. And I've got to say, interestingly enough, the reason I started watching Buffy is because, yeah, I was watching other Flossies at the start of the week. But I missed Chris and Darcy. They were, because they were my whole previous week, Chris cross-stitching and, and Chris, Chris cross-stitcher and Darcy, uh, Stitchman Darcy, because I had watched them, like, continuously for a whole week when I was sick, uh, you know, from start to finish, binge-watched. Well, not completely finished for Darcy, but I binge-watched. I... It's not that the other floss tubers weren't interesting or, or you know, that I didn't enjoy them. I did. But, um, I don't know. I just... I... I don't know, I suppose felt more connected, I think. I don't know. What do you reckon? Um, they're very easy to connect with. Uh, Darcy's very much like me in that I love talking to people and I love making new friends. I'm just a really crap person at start <laughs> starting it. I get very nervous um, sending out a message or sending a message out of the blue to say hi, you know, sort of thing. It, it is quite a nerve-wracking thing for me to do. So... You know, on Instagram, if you want to DM me, I keep on saying PM because it's a private message, but everyone keeps on saying DM, and it took me a while to work out what that was, and it was, is it direct message? Is that what the DM stands for? Anyway, you know, if you want to, you know, have a conversation with me and, and stuff like that, I think my camera's slipping down, isn't it? It is. See, look, there we go. Honestly, the... Hang on, you're going to be going for a ride. I'm not going to cut this out because I don't know how to. <laughs> Um, okay, we'll see if we'll see if we can stay straight. There we go. Okay. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, if you if you wanna drop me a line, I would love it. In all honesty, I I love all that. Um, hang on, I'm just gonna pause you just while I can try and get this thing right. Okay, hang on a second. Okay, how's that? It's probably not straight, but I'm sure you'll suck it up or tilt your head, whichever. Okay, right, now, look, I mean, look at that, we're, we're already 15 minutes in and I haven't done nothing but yak 
Okay. I don't even know where I finished off. Oh, yeah. So, Stitch Man Darcy. Um, I caught up with the proper stitcher. Um, I checked out some of uh, the farm girl. The Find Me a Farm Girl. Uh, Chrissy. Um, and, I mean, I've been spending a lot of time on Instagram having a look at all the pictures of StitchCon because, I'm, you know, of course everyone's curious. Everyone's talking about it. And it looks, it does look like a lot of fun. And it looks so inviting and... Um, and that sort of thing and unfortunately that's not the sort of thing that I'd be able to go to and I got to admit when I saw the pictures of like the full rooms with all the people it's like oh yeah no, that's 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 not that's not at this time that's not a comfortable place for me, for me to go uh okay so what have I been working on this week um it was really funny, uh, one of the episodes that I just watched of Darcy's, him mentioning that, you know, even if you only do one or two stitches, it still works, so you show it. Um, and, you know, everyone always says, I didn't get as much stitching done as I thought I was going to. I got more stitching done than I thought I had. So, na na na, Darcy, <laughs> um, if, if you ever watch this. Um... I didn't. I, I, you know, I did. I was, I was, I was concerned about the fact that I don't think I've done all that much this week, until I started getting it all together about what I've worked on this week, and I was like, oh, okay, that's a bit more than I thought I had. Uh, a few extra things must have slipped in, without me noticing. And monkey, you're all wet. Why do you like going and running outside in the rain? Um, come on, yeah, come on, come up and say hi. If you wanna be somebody, if you wanna go somewhere, you better wake up and pay attention. So here's Monkey, and he's all wet because you know that's the only time he will happily come and get up on me without me actually needing to sing very much. Um. <laughs> Because he basically wants me to dry him off. And usually I have a towel with me, but unfortunately I don't at the moment. So I'm having to basically wipe him on me. So I'm going to have these lovely wet spots, which is going to look so attractive on film. Um, yeah, so Monkey monkey has decided... Oh, I know what it is. It's because I haven't put any treats down for them. That's what it is. Is that what it is, Bob? Good boy. Yeah. Um... <laughs> Okay, come on, monkey, off you get. You said hello now. You want to say hello properly? Say hi to everybody. Say hi. I don't want to say hi. Oh. Okay. Right, so let me try, try and get this intro done on this other one, and then I'll pop them down. Um, now, as you know, you would have seen, I was going through my whips and things like that, and I was dismantling them, basically. And uh, choosing which ones I was going to completely frog or maybe just cut off the piece of fabric that it started on um, and uh, use the fabric for something else because I wasn't going to do that design anymore. One of the ones was Halloween Night by Doreen Jones. Now, I love this design. I do. I think it is absolutely brilliant. Um... And I had started just this little part down here and a little bit of the, um, like on half of it. I think I've done about half. And I was looking at it and looking at it and looking at how much more there is to go. And yeah, I probably could have kept going at it, but I just wasn't feeling it. And so I sort of thought, you know what? No, we're not gonna we're not gonna do this. We're gonna, you know, as great as the design is, I'm gonna pull this apart. And then I thought about it, and I thought, one of my, I mean, I've got a list of, of finishes I want to give a go this year, and one of them is a drum, and I sort of thought, oh, I, I could possibly use this to make a drum, if I finish that bottom section. So, um, I'd already cut up the fabric, or cut the, the top of it off, when I came to this wonderful thought, um, when I was going through and sorting out my rubbish and stuff, stuff like that. 
So I already cut off the fabric at the top, but it's still going to work because, I mean, there's enough at the top that I can play with. I'm just not going to stitch right up to it. So this is where I'm up to. So I filled in all that blue. <coughs> Sorry. Filled in the blue, added a bit of blue down on the sides here, which I originally wasn't going to, but now it's going to be a drum. I'm, I'm doing them. Um, so basically, I'm thinking it's going to end like that. I've taken out, there was a bit of black in the middle there, I think, which was the start of the cat. So I've removed that. Um, so that's basically going to be what's going to be on the drum, that point there. So I just need to do the rest of this side, fill in around here, finish off the Happy Halloween, um, and do the border. And then that, I'm going to figure out how to make it to a drum. I mean, it leaves me about two inches at the top. Um, I could frog it, but I'm just going to leave it. It's like, what's the point of frogging it? It's I'll, I'll get it to work. Um, so yeah, so, um, and that is on a piece of fabric that I dyed, uh, which will bring me to my next one. Um, now I said last week I was waiting for some threads to arrive to start this particular project. And I was originally looking at the blue fabric. The, it's sort of a tealy blue. And I'm actually thinking I'm going to start it again on this one instead. Because I did make a start on Stitchman Darcy's The Religion of Solitude. As I said I would, I said I'd start it this week and I was determined to. Unfortunately, that's when my eyes started clicking, so I had to stop um, before my eyes completely switched off. So, The Religion of Sol Solitude by Stitchman Darcy. It's one of his, his new design, so I'm allowed to do that. Now, I was using the same fabric as I used for Happy Halloween, you know, for Halloween night. And, you know, I love this fabric, and I am going to use it for something, but I just don't think it's working with this one. So, yeah, that's not, that's not doing it for me. So, I am going to restart it on this instead. I want something a bit more bold for that one. Um, so, yeah. So, I'm not even going to talk about the threads because I'll be changing all the threads again. Okay, what else did I start? Oh, no, start. Whip. Another whip. Um, witchy Stitcher Antisocial Bat. Hopefully I've got a picture of it and I can slip it in here. Um, I had only done a little bit, which if I can find the picture, I will put that up there as well. And Oh my gosh, it's gone really dark. What's going on? Here we go. Um... Oh, this camera today is going to, there's going to be cursing. Um, um, I, I had only done, like, part of the word, I think. Maybe a little bit more. I hadn't done any of the back stitch or anything else, though. But here we go. This is where I'm up to now. So I just have to finish filling in the bat and then do the words, the rest of the words down the bottom. And then that one will be done. Um, and it's actually quite an easy stitch. I decided to go with the purple and the, the colors that I've chosen for the bats and in here, um, because it's DMC 4245, I looked up what colors go into DMC 4245, um, and I picked out those four colors and I'm incorporating them in as the bats. So... That's actually the colours of the of the thread itself. So I'm, I'm really happy with that. And it's getting stitched on 14 count uh, the Opal Ada. So it's a bit sparkly. I don't know if you can see that on there, but it is a bit sparkly. And it's called Christmas Garland by Jodie Ree Designs. Um, i got to say, a lot of the Advent ones from last Christmas from the Mega from the Christmas Advent box, I've got to say, a lot of them are so suitable for the, you know, the, the gothy Halloween-y sort of stitches I do, which is funny for a Christmas box, but there you go. Um, so those were the only ones that I, you know, like works in progress. Not many. Um, but I did have three finishes. That's right. Got, got three things finished. 
Now the first one, um, you would have seen that I had nearly finished this last week. Um, modern folk embroidery. I knew I should have written these things down. Um, and I, I just honestly, I got so hooked on this one. I, it was just such an easy, simple stitch, and it was a wonderful quote. So you would have seen this on my Instagram. There we go. So Poppy's knocking stuff off. So there we go. Uh, I did. I mean, obviously, it was all supposed to be in black. Um, but what I did was, I went through all the colours that I was using last week, so I'm not going to go through those. Uh, but they're all hand dyed threads. The grey is thread works. Uh, we've got uh, colour works or gentle arts. I'll have to have a look. See, I'm not overly organised today. Had a bit of a late start, had a late night, and the weather's miserable, and it was not encouraging me to get out of bed. Um, on a rainy Sunday morning, all you want to do is just curl up and stitch, in all honesty. You don't want to have to get up and do anything. But uh, I thought, oh, you know what, I'll, I'll get this done. I'll get dinner on so that it's cooked for tonight. Um, only to find my flatmate is using his slow cooker today, damn it. So I'm going to have to cook it later on uh, in, in the normal way. Um, anyway, so the next one that I finished was Cafe Latte. This is by Little House Needleworks. It's stitched on 14 count oatmeal rustico ada uh, and it's using all the cord four colours in the Weeks Dye Works. No it's not, it's classic colour works. I'm doing good today. Um, I quite like it. I wasn't sure about how light the cup was. The interesting thing is, is it says to use light fabrics. So that the bamboo pops. Um, I'm not seeing popping bamboo in all honesty. Um, I think it, <laughs> it blends in rather well. So I'm trying to decide if I go back and do a little bit of uh, back stitch just around the edge there um, in I don't know a, a, a pale you know brown or something like that just to help it sort of define itself from the fabric. But I do love it. Um, I was trying to decide if I was going to do the other two that are in the chart, uh, on the chart, which is the Frappuccino and the Cappuccino, I think it was. I don't think I am. I think I've got other coffee ones to do. So I think that's going to be the Little House Needlework, because I love lattes. That's my favourite. Um, so I think... Yeah... Maybe. I think that I think that's gonna be my coffee coffee one. And then happily I finished number five of my uh salt box houses from Pinker and Punk and Quilting. Uh this is where I was last time. So there was a bit of work to do, just a bit. I was just over the moon to finally get all that bloody green done. Um, because it doesn't look like a lot until you start stitching. There's, there's in those bottom rows, there's about 900 stitches just in those bottom rows, uh, give or take, and the majority of it is that green. Um, it was when I was doing that that I was thinking I should have, <laughs> I should have changed my mind and made it variegated because then at least it'd be more interesting. But it still worked out really lovely. So this was the last of the five that I started in April. And that's Autumn's Salt Box. Again, there were a few things I was going to change, but I stuck to doing what I'd done with the rest, and that is keeping to colours. So um, originally, you know, these are the original colours. I was never sure about the blue door, and I was contemplating changing that, but I left it in there. And then with the house, I was really... When, I, when I'd done this part here, and I really loved it, and again, I've got to look at maybe doing some backstitch down here, because my fabric is very close to the colour of the thread. Um, but I was thinking, instead of just doing white, which I thought was a bit too bright, 
or might be a bit too bright maybe blend one and one thread but I went I, I did the same as I'd done with the other ones and I stuck to what the colors were and I'm really glad I did it was it was actually really nice um, to, to stitch up a really lovely thing to, <laughs> this this part was nice to stitch up I loved doing the tree and the leaves and and that sort of thing but just the little details and stuff I love my little cat um, it took me a while to get that pumpkin done because I couldn't find my 301. I was hunting for it. I went through all my whips thinking, did I take it out of this one and put it in something else? No, no, no. I had it uh, in the little box next to my bed. I think I must have been stitching one night and when I packed everything up, that might have not been put back in the bag and then I saw it and I just put it in the stitchy box next to my bed. Okay, so things that I'm going to be pulling out this week to work on. Um, they'll be restarting Darcy's one as, as one and finishing off the antisocial bat uh, as another. Some other whips. I'm really going to try. I'm not. I, I'm still deciding whether I'm actually going to do the whole thing or just part of it. Um, all that backstitch that I've got to do. I mean, she, she's done. I just got to do all that backstitch. So... I'm going to maybe try and make that my 100 a day challenge because <laughs> I, I failed last week's one, which was going to be the mushroom, uh, the, the yeah mushroom forest by Tiny Modernist. Totally failed. Didn't even pick it out. Um, instead, I grabbed the coffee one out and finished it. But, you know, there's so little left to do and it, all it is is the back stitch. See these little, see this little gridded part here? That's to go all the way around. And that's what's putting me off. And also, you know, obviously finishing off the words up, up the top. Um, I'll have to look up the designer because it wasn't on the printed paper. So I'm going to have to go back into my Etsy to see who the seller was. Um, but it came in two versions. A muck, a muck, a muck, which is one that I've, you know, and you get both in the in the purchase. And the other one's a mock, a mock, a mock. So A-M-O-K or A-M-U-C-K. So I went with a muck. Um, but I really have to, have to work on that one. Uh, another one, which I want to try and do a bit more on, um, and I'm going to give it to my mum in November for her birthday, maybe, um, is this one here, Colourful Rose by Sweet Annette. This was started back in 2020. And um, it's, it's definitely not my normal style or anything like that. But I'm sort of figuring, well, it's for mum. So I'll, you know, I'll finish it. Because I was going to, it was one I was going to pull apart. Um, but then I sort of thought my mum, my mum will like it. So that's where I've started. That's what, I, you know, what I got up to. Um, it is getting mm -hmm. stitched on 14 count. Ada called Pink and Yellow by Colour Cascade Fabrics there in Australia. It is a beautiful, you know, the, the colours are gorgeous. And, you know, um, I, and, and the design is actually really clear and easy. So I'm, I sort of thought, you know what, I'll pull that out as one of my projects to work on for the rest of the month. This one I don't have a cover picture of, but it was part of the series of 12 a year of stitching by Joan Elliott and it was one that I nearly finished I was just missing one color I've got that color so I'm just going to fill in the gaps and um, add my own back stitch because I no longer have the chart but there we go and then I'm going to use the rest of the fabric for something else but she's beautiful and I just sort of thought it's a Christmas one well it's a winter one so I don't feel so <laughs> I don't feel so bad it's winter um, but she is really lovely and it's getting stitched. See, I mean, I had planned on doing all 12. And so I just need to unstitch the rest of it. But I'm going to use that fabric for something else. Because it is beautiful fabric. Um, I think it's a Jodie Ree, I think. I'm just not sure of the name of it. So, and yeah, I had I had started the Cupid one, or the February one, whatever. Bar humbug. Um... but I hadn't really got anywhere with that one so I didn't, you know, no concerns about unpicking that one but the girl, 
I just sort of thought, oh, you know what, you are so close and I know I've got the colour for it. So I just need to use that thread and finish that one off. Uh, and this one I started on a, on a piece of scrap fabric that I had, I think, ice dyed. I think it was when I was playing with ice dyeing. But the only reason I don't like ice dyeing is because, one, you need so much ice. And, two, it takes way too long. And I'm so not that patient. Um, looking at the wrong way. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm just not patient enough. I get out the hair dryer <laughs> and dry the dang ice, you know, heat it up to melt it faster. I'm, I'm, I'm useless with that sort of stuff. But it is this one from the Stitcher Hood. Uh, I've actually got two of the series. So I've also got uh, this one here. I think it is. Yeah, Moon Gazing. So I've got Moon Gazing as well. But I'm starting with, with uh, Star Gazing. That's this one. And there's a lot of filling in, which I'm going to try and, and do this week. Um, so there we go. So I made a good start on it. Um, I just haven't gotten any further. So those are the ones that I'm pulling out for this week. And whoops. Hang on a second. Please hold. Okay. <laughs> So what else have I got planned this month? Okay, so next next Saturday or Sunday, the 18th. Is that that's Saturday? Next Saturday, I'm getting a sewing lesson from the lovely Judith. So all going well. Um unless something comes up. If something comes up, then bugger. <laughs> but uh that's next weekend, and then the weekend after. Um, we have Matariki in New Zealand. It's our first Matariki uh, as a public holiday, as a celebration. Matariki is the Māori New Year celebration. Um, so it changes every year, but it's always around about the same time of year. So this year is the first year we're going to have it, and that is on Friday the 24th of June. And our Wellington Stitchy group uh, suggested us all have maybe a, a little stitchy get-together to do Christmas ornaments, like a mid, you know, mid, mid year Christmas, mid winter Christmas, because um, you know we're in winter. I know that you guys are, are scorching overseas, but we are freezing. Actually, it's not that cold. It's pretty mild uh, compared to other years that we've had, so that's good news. But um, so we because it's a Christmas themed one, um, you know, we, we, we are to, you know, work on some Christmas ones. Now, we have been very generously helped out by Twin Peaks Primitives um, with some designs for us to to share and, and join in stitching and, and things like that. Twin Peaks Primitives, I have a few of their designs now. They've increased. Um, and I really want to start stitching a lot, of, a lot more of them. Because I, I do, I, I you know, um, I've, I've got the witch's closet, which unfortunately didn't make an appearance last week. But, you know, I that will probably make an appearance again next week as well in my rotation. My rotation is pretty much, I'm in the mood to stitch this. Uh, and I'm going with that. So I've got a general idea of what I want to, want to do and want to stitch. When the time comes for me to pick it up, I'll be like, nah, I'm not doing it. And I'll choose something completely different, and that's fine. So these are loose plans for the rest of the month, okay? So I was looking through the designs <laughs> for me to use for the Christmas Madariki, and they're all so Christmassy, and they're so bright and cheery, or there's real, you know, these gospel things on it. and um, Really, really not me at all. And then I saw this one and was like, oh, you know, um, <laughs> it is not Christmassy enough for me to not do it, if that makes sense. It is Christmassy, yes, but it is my sort of Christmassy rather than, because um, I was thinking I'm going to have to find a nightmare before Christmas or something to do because that way it sort of meets the category of Christmas. But this one, I was over the moon when I saw it. Um, Old Mill Christmas from Twin Peaks Primitives. 
Whether I put the Silent Night, Holy Night down the bottom, I don't know. Um, but I'm definitely doing that mill. I, I love that mill. And I'm thinking of using um, Weeks Dye Works for it. I haven't even looked to see what were the colours that they said. I want to see they've got DMC. So yeah, that is probably going to get changed. And I'm going to do it on the Rustico. Or. Or. I have that one that I started the Taurus on that I've decided not to do. Um, I'll have a play with that one. So that one's not going to get started until the 24th. Um, but I've got it ready to go. Now, I'm doing, you know, I'm, have I done any minis? No, but that's going to be something I'll be doing, you know, um, off and on through the rest of the of the next couple of months, which is good. Um, and Noctiflora Designs had this one available as a freebie, which I thought with my plants and, and stuff like that, this will actually work quite nicely in. So, baby batweed. There is another one, but this is the one that I'm going to start um, this time around. I know there's the fang flower, but it's quite big, and I am going to do it, but it's going to be at a lot slower pace than this one. And then I love Sherlock Holmes and Poirot and, um, you know, that sort of genre of P.I. I love Columbo and Quincy and... Um, you know, I, I I just really, really love um, Inspector Morse, <laughs> Midsummer. Um, I don't know if, I, I mean, there's a part of me that would love to live in Midsummer, but then there's, the risk of death is really high. Um, but, you know, I, I just, I mean, I've got, like, the entire series of Morse. I've got the entire series of Poirot, of... Um, I've got quite a chunk of Midsummer. I've got um, yeah, I've got the Poirot. I've got Sherlock Holmes. I've got quite a few of those, as well as um, an MP3. Same with MP3s for Poirot, um, and so I just have them playing and that sort of stuff. Love them. And with Sherlock Holmes, I'll have to try and remember to bring in. My, my dragons. I've got a couple of little Sherlock Holmes dragons from Pocket Dragons um, and I've got the plate as well from the series and I've got my no shit Sherlock um, because it's a Sherlock Holmes. So I mean I and, and I've even got a Herman, um, Herman bear, teddy bear, which is a extremely limited edition one because, but I'll tell you the story on that when I, when I show them. Um, but Stitch People this one it's like oh my god that is a must I gotta do that one so um that's gonna get done and then I'll be able to add that to my Sherlock Holmes things which will be good save it to last um now I think I showed this last week I'm not sure but this is one that I'm going to do I just sort of thought it was quite lovely and it's definitely a different style for me from usual but even if I don't put it up on my wall or whatever my mom or my sister might like it so or my bestie you know um it's the sort of thing that they <laughs> it's the sort of thing that they like not really the sort of thing I like um but I love strawberries so you know and that's what caught my eye for this one so it's the strawberry bell pull um stitch with coffee designs on Etsy isn't it lovely um, oh, they're crying out loud. Sorry about the light. But there we go. I just sort of thought that was really, really nice. Um, and it's the sort of thing that I can, everyone keeps on talking about, just do one little motif at a time and, and that sort of stuff. So I'm sort of thinking, well, okay, I, I can do that. That might be something that will not get finished until Christmas time, but that's going to get started this month. Um... This one I am doing for my bestie. It is from... I purposely kept it out so that I can remember. It is from... Who is it from? 
um, Lila's studio. Oh, we're running out. My printer wouldn't print the page properly, so there we go. But it's called Best Friends from Lila's studio. Just after it printed this, my printer had a total hissy fit. So, oops. Um, yeah, so I'm going to do that for my bestie um, up north. Her birthday is in November, so I've got time. But I'll start that this month. And then, uh, Twin Peaks Primitives, Mum's birthday sale. Um... I wasn't supposed to go shopping because I'd already misbehaved myself Queen's birthday weekend getting all the extra flosses in the sale <laughs> that arrived and I was like oh let me go and have I'm just gonna go and have a look I'm not gonna get anything I'm just gonna go and look and it was a sampler sale and I sort of thought Okay, I could look for a Halloween one because there's a lot of Halloween gothy sort of samplers out there. But I sort of thought, no, I've got my, my Quakers to do. I've got my gothic Quakers um, or my Halloween Quakers. So I just sort of thought I don't want to do a sampler in that style because, you know, the motifs will probably all be very similar to what's in my Quakers. So I wanted something a bit different. And... And because I've got the strawberry pull, uh, bell pull, I thought, when I saw this one, it's like, ah, ah, okay, well, I'll have to do this one. Again, I'm not 100% sure about the alphabet, but again, it's the authenticity of the design. And it's it's what you generally see in a sampler, is there's an alphabet in there somewhere or something. But again, a quote has letters and letters are from the alphabet, so who knows what I'd end up doing. But this is Strawberry Pickers, Emma. Um, and I just thought it was really lovely. I, the the colours weren't too over the top. I love the little house. I, I do. It actually reminds me of some of the places that I saw when I was in Europe, which is really nice. Um, and, and the girls, you know, picking their strawberries with their baskets. One of the first jobs that I had wasn't a paper run, it was strawberry picking. Um, and so it's really lovely and the little animals so you got is it little bunnies I think down here and we've got the lovely birds up there um, this is going to be done on my Rustico uh, Ada oatmeal um, I have got some other bits coming from Australia um, because she was having a, a big clearance sale this weekend and um, my Plum Street samplers have come in over to her and she's nicely kitted up the fancy flosses that go in them for me so I'm, I'm going to have all the flosses that I need for those so I won't have to wait and order the flosses once they get here if I don't already have them. I don't mind having extra of the, the colour works or the week's dye works or stuff like that because I do use them. Those are... I, I, keep on switching things out so that I can use my week's dyes or my colour works or you know stuff like that so um, they're, all, they're going to come with the required colours for the charts so that's good plus some other bits and pieces and then I was talking to her about uh, because of my foray into the Lugana um, <clears throat> I had a look on her site and she had a few that weren't just plain Lugana. Not opal, because I don't think opal on something that fine is gonna gonna work. That's where the, I think the problem was when I when I did my first little tiny cat. Um, the reflection of the sparkles on you know and trying to focus on such fine holes, yeah, caused a lot of issues. Whereas just the the basic Lugana seemed to be okay when you know working one over one. And but I sort of thought. It'd be nice to get some other colours, other than, you know, the ecru or the cream or stuff. And she had some, and there was one, is it coffee, coffee and mocha? Is, is that the one that people mention a lot? I know there was one that, you know, when I saw it, it's like, oh, oh, that's the one that I've seen on the floss tubes. You know, they, they talk about, they get it in like linen and like 40 count or something. But this was uh, 25 count Lagana. So I asked for just a little... Um, 
I think I can't remember. I think it was a fat eight. I didn't want anything big because I'm not going to put anything big on them. They're just going to be small things. So um, she had about three different ones, which which looked lovely. So I thought, well, if I just get a little fat eighth of each, then I can maybe do a few more smalls, um, but on some more interesting fabric. <coughs> Please hold. Talk amongst yourselves. Off your time. Okay. Damn it, burnt my tongue again. Okay. Bobby knocked these off. Okay. So as I said, I was waiting for some threads to arrive. And um, some of them are ones I've never used before. Other ones are... Um, I've used one of the threads and I wanted more. Um, and then others were just because, you know, I really do love them and I want more of them. Okay, so uh, I want more of them category is, of course, my classic colour works. Um, <clears throat> I, I might have gotten one or two. Um, I'm not going to go through them individually because <laughs> there's a lot of threads. Um, the embers one I already had. Um, but yeah. So those are the classic colour works. The ones that are in the bags I already had. The Weeks Dye works. Hey monkey. Um, so this is how I... Oops. There's my bags. I don't know if you can see it. I made these just the little tags. 65 by 75 millimeter bags. And I just pop them in there. I don't usually wrap them around the, the cardboard. Um, okay, now my Bellatrix, that is another one that's going to start making an appearance from the 1st of July. Uh, monkey, you and your wet feet. Get on things you shouldn't be on. Love them. Um, sorry, people. Um, my Bellatrix, yeah, from the 1st of July, I'm going to start trying to add her beads on. So that's going to be my project, which I'll do a little bit each week, little sections each week sort of thing, um, to try and complete her by the end of the year. And then that would have been a two-year project because I started it uh, on the 1st of January last year. So last year was all about stitching her and I finished stitching her earlier this year. Uh, the beads, yeah, the beads are going to be interesting. But I sort of figure if I just, you know, fill my, a couple of needles with the thread, that's usually the hardest part is threading the needle for me. Um, when it's, you know, hard enough on a normal needle. Those beading needles are like teeny. Um, but I have got um, some of the Nymo thread um, so instead of using the cotton uh, for the colour that's around it I'm going to use the Nymo the clear Nymo so that you don't see it hopefully uh, but it's a bit firmer when you go to thread the needle at least that's what I was told so we're crossing fingers and we'll see how that goes once I get started doing that again. Uh, but on her was one from Caron Collection, C-A-R-O-N Collection, called Water Lilies. Now, I'd never use them. They're a silk. Uh, there is, they're, they're 12 ply, so you get 12 strands. And it's 6 yards or something like that. Um, I don't know, is that like 5 metres? I don't know, how big is a yard? Is that like a meter or something I don't know anyway um, I really really loved stitching with that now I've tried other silks and I and I wasn't overly happy because they were really slippery and 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 quite annoying but the Caron ones I absolutely you know the Caron one that I had I absolutely loved using and I'm like I'm gonna have to keep my eye out for more of this Caron because this water lilies one now they've got different ones. There's water lilies, watercolours, 
Oh, I can't remember the other one. Um, and each of them are different, obviously, but they've got the same sort of colours on each in each range. Um, so when they had the sale, and the water lilies and the watercolours were included, I thought, well, the watercolours I'd like to try. I'd like to try watercolours, um, and the water lilies I definitely want to get some more. <laughs> um, so I did. Now this one here is not Caron. It is one by Needle Necessities. Um, but I just really loved it, loved the orange. And that's going to come in handy with a lot of my Halloween ones. But, so this is a um, one of the watercolours. So as you can see, it's a lot thicker. So my question is, for anyone who's used this, is this one that we're supposed to split? Or do you, do you just, because it's three-ply? Or do you not use it for cross-stitch? I got two of them, but they were really lovely. I mean, look at those colours. Um, and then these lovely colours for the water lilies. So if, <laughs> if you can tell me about, you know, the watercolours one. Um, is, it, is it something that you use for cross stitch or is it supposed to be used for something else? I don't know. Uh, again it's a whole learning thing and that's why I like trying out different threads and why I always you know I, I try and get one or two of a new brand or a different brand so that I can have a play and see if I like them and if I like them then I get more and then of course one of my favorite brands is my Threadworks I love my Threadworks and so I just got a few new colors look at that blue hang on sorry you might get a bit of glare but look at that isn't that gorgeous yeah, I love that colour. Um, my colours are either purple or that teal, the electric blue, whatever you want to call it. Absolutely love it. And then this one was sort of like spur, <laughs> spur of the moment. I'm thinking purple and red, that's really cool. Not quite sure where I'm going to use it, but I'm, I know I will make use of it. And then I wanted a nice red um, it is more red. It looks orange on the screen, but it is very red uh, in real life. Um, actually, I think I ordered it because it looked orange. <laughs> so when it arrived and it was red, I was like, oh, oh, that's okay. You know, red's always a good thing. It's always good to have reds. And then I went with a few. They're a little bit more neutral. Um, the, the lilac. I haven't got a lot of pale purples apart from obviously the DMC 210, 29, 211, you know, the pale ones um, of the purples. Um, and I just sort of thought, this is really lovely. It's got, you know, the lilacs and there's a, you know, slight touch of the pinky in there as well. And then I wanted a neutral grey because I've got the, the dark grey, the mid, and now that I've got this sort of neutral, although it does have a greeny tinge to it. Um, and then I, I wanted small greens because of my Beulah and my Witch's Closet. I was looking through um, my hand dyed threads and I realised that I didn't really have the right sort of greens, the khaki greens or anything like that, which is why I ordered khaki green tones for those. Right. Oh. Um, my, my darling... So I'm just going to put those back in here so that I can take them back into my stitchy room. I mean, this is my stitchy room, but my stitchy room when the weather's crap is me cooling up in bed and stitching. Um, especially when I've got the house to myself. So there we go. I've just, I've just got those in there because that, that is my temporary holder until I make tags for all of them to go into their bags so that I can put them in their boxes. But... My my darling, he came over on Friday and replaced the battery in my car, which was really lovely of him. Um, and he gave me a lovely gift. You'll be thinking, what is that? One, it is a hundred year old Macrocarpa wood, and it is part of one of the buildings that were torn down in Wellington. Um, 
one of the old old buildings so this was part of one of the of the flooring uh, in one of those lovely old buildings so it's quite historical in in regards to my history in Wellington because um, my granddad and you know my granddad's side of the family on my mum's side um, a lot of the buildings around Wellington and things like that uh, were either built with or had something to do with our family because Tonks Bricks, uh, which a lot of the buildings around Wellington were, you know, were built with, were my family's bricks. Um, and I've actually got one of those as well. I managed to save from another demolished building and it's got Tonks Bricks written on it um, or engraved on it. Um, a lot of the plumbing around Wellington was done by my family, my granddad. Monkey, don't play with the cotton. Ow! Ooh, yeah. Um. Ow, oh, that was my finger. A lot of the uh, plumbing around Wellington was done by my granddad and his dad. Um, KP Martin and Sons plumbing and caravan supplies. Interesting mix, admittedly. But I remember when I was younger granddad you know we'd, we'd come down to what you know wellington to visit granny and granddad and granddad would would take me around wellington and point out all the places that they'd done the toilets it's always one of those things you can be proud of isn't it mind you you know blocked toilets ain't a good thing um but you know he he I, i've always had that interest in, in history and stuff like that and i i loved it how Granny and Granddad would sort of take me around and they'd just sort of show me this is where the water came up to and this is all reclaimed land and or man-made land sort of thing where they've filled it all in and, and that sort of stuff. But um, a lot of the old buildings um, have, you know, family connections. We've got a couple of streets named after us, uh, you know, after our family uh, in town um, and, and, and that sort of thing. And so when he said that one of the buildings down from him is, is getting you know remodeled and stuff basically they're ripping everything out all this beautiful old wood and, and that sort of stuff and he managed to get a piece of this 100 year old macrocarpa flooring and he used a piece of it to make me this thread winder isn't that lovely i think that is and he engraved it he even got he even got very creative and he engraved it um so now with my new threads i can actually you know cut them to the to the same length so they're all around about 12 inches 12 12 14 inches which is the length that i like when it, when i'm using the over dyed or hand dyed threads because um, i'm not doing loop start so it's pulling two threads so it's, you know whereas when i do a loop start yeah I, I do a big long length and then you fold it in half and it gives you around about 12 inches so um so yeah so he made me this so I'll, I'll be having fun turning all of those uh, into the, the correct lengths before I, I put them into their bags now, which will be really cool so that when I go to kit up, I can just pull out lengths at a time, especially the Weeks Dye Works ones, because the other ones, a lot of them are already cut, which are great. Um, but the Weeks Dye is, is not, and um, this way I can get them all cut to length so I know how many lengths I've got because I know how many stitches I can get out of a length. Um, but other than that, ooh, thunder, we're going to have some lightning. It's not over here yet. We've had thunderstorms and a lot of rain and all that sort of stuff most of the week. And I love it. Um, I, I, yeah, I'm odd. I know. But I love thunderstorms and stuff like that. Oh, the other one, my notebook. The other one that I discovered on FlossTube this week is one that I want to go back and watch because I didn't get a chance to watch any more than like the first five minutes, but I was curious about it, so I want to go back and have another look. Um, and that is uh, Stitching and True Crime with LaDonna and Tina. Two things I love. It's like, oh my god, I love true crime. I love I love mysteries and uh, and that sort of thing. So I was like, ooh. Oh, I'm going to have to go and check them out. So that's what I'll be watching today um, while I'm doing my antisocial bat. And then I'm going to uh, restart Darcy, Darcy's 
solitude because I don't like it on, on I don't like the start I'm not going to sit there you know frogging what I've already done I'm just going to put that aside and I'm just going to start on Darcy's one um and and keep going with that so yeah so next week depending on what I get done this week uh there might be a bit of a parade next week which will be the 50 completes either that or I leave it until the end of the month and do it as an end of month you know six months in um the completed projects plus the whips uh and we'll see so that that might be in two weeks so it'll give me time to you know write up all the cards and and, and stuff like that because I'm well behind on that I've got to hunt up all my notes uh and and that sort of thing so um that might be done in two weeks not next week next week uh depending on the weather and depending if anything goes wrong or not I might have some FFIs to you know, to show you because I'm going around to get some lessons uh, or I might have a project bag that I made I don't know we'll see what Judith can can get into my numbskull of a head <laughs> uh, anyway so there we go look at that another hour sorry guys um, here was me thinking I'm probably gonna have the shortest video ever because you know it'll be like 15 minutes of finishes because that's all I could think of that I had done was my finishes my three finishes and I was like hmm you know forgetting about the works in progress or you know stuff that I've been working on or what I'm planning on doing uh you know brain fart um but I have been having a bit of a clear out this week uh and that's been lovely um it's almost cathartic I think and it's always interesting, you know, because this is like two years, this is pandemic stash, you know, um, of, <laughs> of, of what you think you'll need. Uh, and, and because I pretty much teach myself and I don't tend to ask questions, I know that's bad. Um, so if you have any questions, please do ask. I, I tend to, you know, get a whole bunch of products and try them out myself and, yeah, most of them aren't suitable for me. Well, they don't work for me. You know, I don't feel comfortable using them, or uh, they just they just don't do what I think in my head they were supposed to do. Or maybe I just don't know how the hell to use them, and that's probably more likely. Um, I have oh, I don't know if you I don't know if you can see her, but Beulah has started. She started getting some some trees down the bottom. Yeah, a little. Can't pick up. Um. She started getting some trees. So I am starting to decorate her, but I've got some ideas in my mind and I just need to sort of work out how to, to make them work. Uh, I was planning on having some of my framed ones <laughs> hung today, but, you know, by today, but um, Friday was spent fixing my car and just hanging out with my honey, um, which was nice. Um, and the weather was, you know, was suitable just for curling up and watching Buffy. <laughs> Poor darling, you had to put it with watching Buffy. Um, but yeah, so hopefully next week we will look at maybe uh, hanging up some pictures, which are much needed. <laughs> uh, I mean, I've got all this wall space and I still haven't put anything on. I did manage to find all my clips and hooks and, and stuff like that, which I think was one of the other delays, was I couldn't remember where I'd put them. But here comes the rain. Can you hear that? So that's my cue to go cool up with my coffee and my cross stitch and some more floss tube. Um, and we will hopefully catch up with you next week. If you liked what you saw, please thumbs up. Or if you like, you can subscribe um, so you know when I'm going to be posting next. I'm trying to keep it to the once every week. But that may end up getting pushed back to every two weeks. It just depends on whether I think it's worth your time. <laughs> um, with yeah, to to do one. If I've got not a lot, then there might be a little thing saying sorry, not this week, or out gone fishing, or I don't know, gone brewing. Um, but thank you so much for.
stopping by for watching and you know and again if you've got any recommendations for any floss tubers or anything like that please let me know you can post below you can send me a message i love getting messages and i do respond to everybody um sometimes it might just be a heart or you know stuff but usually it's a a major conversation um so yeah so i do appreciate uh everyone for you know coming along for the ride it does get a bit bumpy sometimes um but i think the worst part about mental health is that people don't talk about it and that's when things can go wrong because people cut themselves off and and that sort of stuff so i've learned um as hard as it might be for some to see or things like that it's important that you don't you don't feel less of a person or not worth it to speak out so please you don't have to speak out publicly I didn't mean to last week I didn't mean to react the way that I did and I do apologize if that upset anybody um, but sometimes you need to sort of get it out there and everybody has off days nobody is like they are on the TV you know that you watch every week nobody's like that you, you couldn't keep it up in all honesty <laughs> everyone has bad days and unfortunately mine was last Sunday um, but the best thing you can do is let others know that you're human and that you have those moments um, but you know I went forward through the week christened it up um, although what's the other one that um, oh jack it up there were a couple of times that you know that week I was a bit jacked up but gee but you know I think that's allowed as well <laughs> um, so if you don't know what Chris it up and jack it up mean I'll put the links down below for for Darcy um, Darcy started this whole thing about Chris it up and one of the floss tubes that he put up not long after that was about jacking it up for when he's having a bad moment um, like Jack Nicholson that sort of thing and uh, I'll also put down the links below for uh, as many as I can I'll try um, I, I may not I'm having a few issues today with my eyes so um, I don't know if I'll be stitching it all but I'm going to give it a go um, otherwise because they're already starting to click so when they click that means I, I need to stop and put a bunch of stuff in my eyes to get them lubricated as it were uh, but we'll see how we go <laughs> um, but yeah I'll, I'll, I'll do what I can I'll put the links down below and if I missed anybody you can just comment down below drop me a message I'm on Instagram now and I love getting messages on there as well um, and yeah so there we go. So that's it for another week. Sorry, here we go. Oh my god. That was like nine minutes of dribble. <laughs> um, but it's important to let you know that mental health is an issue and it needs to be talked about and it's not something to be ashamed of. It happens. It happens to the most humorous people. It happens to those that make you laugh and it happens to those that just keep you entertained. Um, one of the best examples that, that comes to mind is Robin Williams incredible man the laughter, the jokes the life didn't, didn't quite work so please remember if you need help if you need to speak out hey I'm available if you, if you want to vent if you want to joke if you want to I don't know whatever that's fine I know that last week I lost a few subscribers and that's fine as well 
Uh, I totally understand that, but incredibly enough, I actually gained some, but I think they haven't seen last week's one, which is probably why. So, um, we'll see how that goes. I'm not really fussed about the subscriber rate, although I love you guys coming back and watching, and I do appreciate that. Um, but, you know, there's, there's thousands of, of floss tubes out there, so this is, this is for me. Uh, not that I don't love entertaining if I can. Uh, I will, but this is my record now, so we're going to stick with that, we're going to keep on cressing it up and occasionally jack it up, because there's nothing wrong with the occasional jack, um, and I'm going to try and behave myself still in regards to not swearing, although I do think last week I might have sworn, and I do, ap <laughs> I do apologize for that, um, I might have done an f-bomb I think in there somewhere maybe I mouthed it maybe it didn't come out loud I don't know um I wasn't really overly focused when I was getting it ready to upload so uh yeah oops uh meanwhile you guys have a wonderful week for those that have been lucky enough to go to any of these retreats or are going to be going to one of these retreats or stuff like that have a fantastic time safe traveling and things like you know and and, and just look after yourselves and those around you. Be kind and don't forget to march to the beat of your own drum because that's where the magic happens. Keep stitching. Toodles.